Hi, this is Greg for Lightwave Digital. This is an introduction into using the Unreal Bridge for the first time. In the last tutorial, we got the bridge installed and up and running. And so right now I have layout running, I have the bridge running, and I have Unreal Engine all running. Before we get started, there's just a couple things I'd like to talk about. First is there's many ways to do things in Lightwave and in Unreal Engine. So the way that I'm showing you today is just my way of doing it. If you have another way that works better for you, then by all means, use that method. Another thing is that when you go to transfer assets from Lightwave into Unreal, a lot of how you'll do it and how things go depends on the needs of your specific project. So it will vary depending whether you're taking in a whole scene. Is it just going to be a few objects you're transferring? Is the player going to be interacting with those objects? Are they going to be distant objects off in the background? What I'm showing you today may not necessarily apply to your specific project. What we're going to be doing today is just sending over a couple static meshes. And as you'll see, I'm assuming that the player will be interacting with these objects. How I handle this situation might be different from if you had a massive scene and it was just going to be off in the background where the player is not going to be interacting with any of those objects. And there's different ways of handling it. You could set collisions on all the static meshes or you could just put a blocking volume up and the player just can't even get over there. So there's lots of different ways to handle different situations is what I'm saying. In preparing for this presentation today, I was actually surprised at how many steps there are. <laughs> so anyway, we're just going to go through it kind of step by step. With the bridge, I feel like a lot of these controls are pretty self-explanatory. Disconnect is disconnect. Advanced connection settings is if you had another instance of Unreal Engine running and you wanted to connect to it. Alternative Unreal Root is if you had a different directory folder structure for some reason other than the default. Overwrite materials, that's all pretty self-explanatory. Once you sent something over and you didn't want to, it to be affected again, it would probably be wise to uncheck the box so you don't overwrite something you're already happy with. Interesting about Live Sync is that there is a setting on Unreal Engine that you have to enable or Live Sync will not work. And then of course you can send selected items or all the items and then you can click send to do it manually. If you have Live Sync set up, it'll go automatically. And then you can send transforms, animation sequences, and you can actually get transforms back from Unreal Engine. This is very intuitive, very logical. That's one of the things that I like about Lightwave is that there's no icons. It's all spelled out what everything is. Let's jump into Unreal Engine real fast and go over a couple settings. And probably one of the most important settings is if we go into Edit and go into Edit Preferences, we can search for one called use less CPU when in background. By default, this is enabled usually, but you need to uncheck this if you want to use Live Sync. So this is a mandatory setting if you want to use Live Sync. There's another one. If you get into a situation where it doesn't seem like the bridge is working very well or it's becoming unstable, if we just type in ASY, you'll see that we have this enable async texture compilation and loading. You might want to disable this setting if you run into a situation where things are acting wonky or weird. I haven't had that happen to me, so I'm just leaving that checked. Now, if we come back into layout, the last thing that we want to do is if you hit control D and come up to the CS tab, go to quick presets, make sure your color space is set to sRGB. And that is our basic settings that we need to have set up to use the Unreal Bridge. So let me bring it back up here again. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this over to the right side of the screen. Okay, so to get started with this, I'm just going to create two assets. I'm going to go into Model, Geometry, Ground Plane, and go OK. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I'll go back to Geometry, cube and select that and go OK. And I'm just going to raise this cube up a little bit more. Then what we'll do is we'll go into the surface editor. I'll hold control and I'm going to select both of these objects and I'm going to switch the material from principle BSDF to Unreal. Then I'm going to select the ground plane, go into edit node graph. I'm going to delete this principle BSDF node I'm going to drag this material pin and plug it into OpenGL so that we can send our materials across. Then I'm just going to double click into here 
and I'm gonna set a color to red, and then I'm gonna check Unreal Tessellation, which will triangulate our geometry just the way that Unreal likes it. So I'm gonna close this, close that, and I'm gonna go into the cube and do the same thing. I'm gonna delete this node here. I'm gonna drag the material pin into OpenGL. I'm here, let's choose a color, something a little different, blue, and check Unreal Tessellation. And that's all we need to do for our materials. If I close this, you'll see everything is ready to go. What I'd like to do is send this into an empty level in Unreal. So what I'm gonna do is jump into Unreal Engine. I'm gonna come up to File, New Level, and I'm gonna create an empty level and go Create. I'm not gonna save any of that stuff. And now I've got a completely blank level. Then what we can do is come up to Window, Environmental Light Mixer. And what's neat about this is you can watch your scene get built and then customize the elements as you see fit. So all we have to do is click these five buttons. So we'll go create skylight, create atmospheric light, create sky atmosphere, create volumetric cloud, and create height fog. And now we have this wonderful scene ready to go. So now what we can do is jump back in to lay out here. I'm not going to send all because it'll send the camera and the lights. The scene is already lit, so I don't need any more lights and I can use the Unreal camera, so I don't need to send the LightWave camera. So all I wanna do is just send the LightWave assets here. So I'm gonna go selected. The new cube object is already selected, so I'm gonna press control and select the ground plane too and all I have to do is go send. We should be done in LightWave for now. We've built our assets and now we've transferred them over. So let's go into Unreal here and there you'll see them. There's a few things that we need to do. You know, nothing's perfect necessarily. And so there's always some tweaking and things, adjustments that we need to make. You'll notice that when it was imported or transferred over, it created two folders here a materials folder and a file for the static mesh, one for the ground plane too, the exact same thing. And so we can rename these if we want. I'm just gonna leave them called their default names for right now. But just notice that these are both static meshes. If I were to hit play right now, first, I don't know where my player would spawn in, and two, the player would fall through the floor because there's no collision attached to the ground plane. So those are some things that we have to fix. In addition, we will get a message regarding the root component and we can fix that very easily. So first thing I'm gonna do is if I have my place actors window open, I'm gonna drag player start onto the ground plane and just make sure the capsule's not interfering with the ground plane. And watch what happens if I hit play. My character is gonna fall through the floor but then we're also gonna get this message about the static mesh component. We can resolve that very simply and actually to our favor. I wanna make a point about something that's kind of good to know is a static mesh versus a static mesh actor. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert our static mesh into static mesh actors. So one thing I should mention too, if we get disoriented like this in the scene, we can select one of our objects over here, and if I hit F, it takes us right back to where we need to be. So there is our plane, and there's our cube. In Unreal Engine, there is the terminology is a static mesh and a static mesh actor. And essentially the difference is the static mesh is an inert object. It doesn't really have any interactivity, but it's transformable. So you can move it, scale it, rotate it but it doesn't really have any interactivity with it. And then you have a static mesh actor, which basically creates an actor out of the static mesh. And that becomes not only transformable, but adds interactivity. This parallels over also to Unreal Editor for Fortnite, where they have something called a building static mesh, which is transformable, but it doesn't have any interactivity and something they call a building prop which is essentially like a static mesh actor that does have interactivity. So these are roughly the same terms as these. So just something to put in your back pocket for future reference. So anyway, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna convert these static meshes into static mesh actors. And the advantage of doing that is if we wanna give them interactivity, we will have that. And if we just wanna use the static mesh, 
we can use a static mesh. So with the cube selected in the scene, I'm just gonna come over here to this icon right there and click it, and you'll see static mesh actor. And I'm just gonna call this SMA underscore cube and go select. And now it's converted it into a static mesh actor. So I can close this and you'll see I not only have my static mesh now, but I also have one with interactivity if I need it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for this ground plane object. I'm gonna select it in the scene, the ground plane object, click here, and then what we'll do is we'll call it SMA underscore floor. It pulls me straight into the blueprint. And now these two objects in our scene, what were static meshes are now static mesh actors and we have the flexibility to make them interactive if we so desire. If we want to bring in a static mesh actor, like if I come to the cube and I just want to bring in a static mesh, now I can. I can do that as well. The last thing that we're going to do is we need to add a collision to our static mesh for our ground plane here. So what we can do with that is with the static mesh actor ground plane selected in the scene, I can come here to static mesh, double click there, come up here to where it says collision, and then just add the box simplified collision and save that. And if I close this or minimize this window, now everything should be fine. So if I hit play now, there I am. So now here we go. Not only do we have static meshes in the scene, we have static mesh actors with which we can add interactivity if we want to later. And like I said, we can drag in as many static meshes as we want now. And if I hit escape, you'll notice we don't get any kind of messages. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found it helpful. Take care and we'll talk again next time.